Hi, and welcome to Warren County Community College's Academic Dishonesty, Plagiarism, and Citations video. The purpose of creating this video um, for students is to let everyone know um, what is expected of them in regard to academic integrity and what happens if they don't live up to those expectations, as well as how to avoid um, cheating, academic dishonesty, and plagiarism. So we're going to start with the statement and policy on cheating, plagiarism, and academic dishonesty that appears in every syllabus for every class at WCCC. This statement reads, students are required to perform all the work specified by the instructor and are responsible for the content and integrity of all academic work submitted. A violation of academic integrity will occur if a student, one, knowingly represents work of others as one's own, two, uses or obtains unauthorized assistance in any academic work, three, gives fraudulent assistance to another student, or four, furnishes false information or other misuse of college documents. In cases of suspected violation of academic integrity, the incident is to be reported to the Office of Academics. A student found guilty of violating the rule of academic integrity by the Vice President of Academics, Dr. Marianne Van Dersen, will be considered to have failed in personal obligation to the college. Such failure will be subject to disciplinary action by the college. So this lets you know um, what's expected of you, what happens if you violate those expectations, and um, we're going to talk about that a little more in detail. So when we're talking about academic dishonesty, which is the opposite of academic integrity, academic dishonesty, dishonesty includes knowingly representing the work of others as your own. So that includes buying papers, using an app to do your math or science calculations for you, having someone else do your work, not using citations for information from a source, or other types of plagiarism. So essentially, when you turn in something at Warren County Community College, number one, you are responsible for what you turn in. So if you um, are turning in something such as a paper that you've bought, an assignment that someone did for you, um, or you've used some uh, kind of unauthorized assistance, which we'll talk about in a second, if you do any of those things, then you are the one that's going to be responsible for the consequences of putting that work out there. Okay, and unless uh, you tell us where you got information in citations and such, the assumption is that the work is your own. So academic dishonesty also includes getting authorized assistance in any academic work. So that includes having someone else do your work for you, whether it's a person, a web source, or an app. So anytime you are getting answers um, and assistance in doing your work that you turn in um, without authorization from a professor, uh, then you're going to be in trouble. That's, that's a problem because, again, it's not your own work, it's somebody else's work. And finally, academic dishonesty includes giving fraudulent assistance to another student. So uh, this includes doing students' work for them or allowing them to copy your work, including lab reports, as well as other classwork and homework assignments. So if you as a student uh, choose to sit down with other people from your class and let them copy your lab report, uh, and you all turn in that lab report, not only will the students who have copied the lab report be in trouble, but you as the student who shared your lab report would be in trouble. And this includes sitting down with other students from your class to complete a quiz or a test or any other kind of assignment. You are expected to do your work on your own unless you are authorized by your professor um, to do uh, it in pairs or teams. Otherwise, you are supposed to do your work on your own, essentially. So uh, Warren County Community College also has an academic code of conduct. Now, just about every school you go to, whether it's a college or university or even high schools, they usually have some kind of academic code of conduct. Uh, Warren County Community College's uh, academic code of conduct is part of the uh, college policy manual, and it states that students have an obligation to conduct your own activities honestly and conscientiously. You should give appropriate recognition by name for their contributions to published material. Each course syllabus will contain the institutional policy on plagiarism, which we covered uh, a few slides ago. But in addition, you shall not present as your own academic work ideas or work of another person without proper acknowledgement of sources. And then finally, the policy says violation of these rules can lead to a zero on an assignment, a failing grade for a course, and or disciplinary action by the college. So I've tried to lay out what it is that we expect from you. We expect you to um, work within the bounds of academic integrity, not practice academic dishonesty, not 
uh, practice any of the forms of cheating that we've talked about. And um, in terms of plagiarism, that means making sure that you are crediting your sources. Now we do find at Warren County Community College that the majority of instances of academic dishonesty and violation of academic integrity is plagiarism. So let's look at why students plagiarize. Now some students do it on purpose, okay? They go out and buy a paper and turn it in as their own. Some students will just knowingly copy and paste things and put it into their assignment and not give credit. And they know they're doing it and they probably know it's not right, but they do it anyway. However, we know the majority of students who plagiarize do so accidentally, normally because students don't know how to correctly cite quoted or paraphrased or summarized information that you're using. So our goal for the rest of the slides from this point forward is to help you to understand how to use uh, outside material appropriately and to understand the importance of giving credit to outside sources. Now what are citations? Citations are used to indicate that you've gotten information from an outside source. Now when we say outside source, that means anything outside of yourself. So that could include something like a PowerPoint that you were given in class by your instructor. It would include your textbook, but it also includes any other research um, you may do or things you find on the web, uh, things like that. That is all considered, those are all considered outside sources. So you need to use citations whenever you use words or ideas from an outside source, from outside of yourself. And that includes um, discussion board posts, tests or quizzes, uh, within PowerPoints or visual presentations, you need to cite your pictures, GIFs, graphs, etc., or any assignment that requires a written response and for which you have accessed information from an outside source. And again, that's everything outside of yourself, including your textbooks. How to use citations. All citations, whether you, you are using APA, MLA, or Chicago-style formatting, include two components. The first component of your citation is found in your references, works cited, or bibliography. Now if you're writing a paper or you're doing a homework assignment that is, um, involves writing, that's going to be the last page of your paper, your assignment, where you include your references, works cited, or bibliography. In a discussion board post, at the bottom of your post, you will put what references, works cited, or bibliography, and you will list that citation there. And that is a longer citation that directs um, whoever's reading the information, uh, it directs them to the source that you used. Now for every citation that you find in your references, works cited, or bibliography, well, it will also have a corresponding in-text citation. This is a shorter version of what you've put in your references, works cited, or bibliography citation, which allows your readers to identify from which of your sources you took the information. So the in-text citation leads to the citation in your references, works cited, or bibliography. Now keep in mind, you will not have anything in your references, works cited, or bibliography that is not also used as an in-text citation. Okay, and for every in-text citation, you must have the citation in your references, works cited, or bibliography. So you can't have one without the other. And for every outside source you use, you must include both of these components. Okay, the in-text citation and the references, works cited, or bibliography um, citation. So why do you need citations? Well, as a college students, there are four main reasons that you really need your citations. But you also um, should consider this for outside of college because even when you get into um, a job or the workforce, if there are times where you must use outside sources, it would be expected that you're going to cite those sources as well. Um, so the four reasons are, first, to show your a professor that you have done the necessary research for your assignment. Okay, you did the work. You need to show the professor that. Um, two is to give credit to the source of your information, obviously. Otherwise, it is considered stealing that information. Three is to give your readers the information that they would need in order to find and access the sources that they use, that you used. So basically, um, your, your professor or whoever's reading it can go back and find that source for themselves should they want to use it. And four, of course, to avoid plagiarism. So at the bottom of this page, I, I noted that I took this image from a source, so I need to cite it here with an in-text citation. And I've done so. That's an APA style um, in-text citation. And that is going to correspond directly to a re uh, an um, entry in my references list at the end of this video. Now there are many types of plagiarism, and these are 10 of them. And I'm not going to go over all 10 because that would take forever. 
But some of the more common ones are the um, good old copy and paste that people do um, and when they copy um, something and, and just paste it right into their assignment and they don't give any um, in-text citation. That's something we see a lot. Uh, the mashup, number seven, is one of my favorites and that could also be called patchwork um, plagiarism or mosaic plagiarism where you're basically taking bits of information from a couple different sources and putting it all into one um, sentence or paragraph of your paper but again you're not giving a uh, reference uh, or citation as to where you got that information. Um, so keep in mind that there are many different types but they're all considered plagiarism um, and that includes uh, submitting a paper that you may have submitted for another class and you just resubmit it in a second class but it's the same paper. That's also considered plagiarism. So just keep that in mind. There are a lot of different types of plagiarism. And I can tell you right now that we've probably seen every single one of these and then some at Warren County Community College. The one thing we caution students about is not to use blanket citations. So a blanket citation happens when, when you create one citation to cover multiple uses of a source. So generally, like in this paragraph under do not use, um, this is a paragraph that has, uh, you can see it has several quotes within it. It probably has some paraphrased and summarized information, but the, whoever wrote this didn't put the citation until the very end. That is not the correct form of using a citation. Okay, You need to have a citation after every piece of information. Each and every quoted, paraphrased, and or summarized piece of information requires a citation. Never just wait until the end of the paragraph to include the citation. Put it wherever you have that information that you've cited, paraphrased, or summarized. What we do find is that students sometimes have trouble understanding um, quoting, paraphrasing, and summarizing. So uh, what happens is a student might paraphrase something and, and not put it in text citation. But what you need to know is anytime, whether you're quoting, paraphrasing, or summarizing something, you are actually, um, you need to put the citation at the end of that quote, that paraphrase, or that summary um, that shows where the information comes from. So people think that in paraphrasing, you put everything into your own words. So uh, a lot of students assume, well, then I don't need a citation because it's my own words. But that would be incorrect. It's not your own ideas. Okay, you're getting the ideas from somewhere else, you're just putting it into your own words, so you definitely need to include a citation at the end of a paraphrase. And same thing with a summary. Um, when you're summarizing something, you're taking a large chunk of something and putting it into your own words uh, in a more concise manner, usually. And um, even though it's your own words and you've put it into your own kind of format and formula, it, you still need to um, cite where you got that information from. So this is a Venn diagram that shows you, uh, again, whether you're quoting, summarizing, or paraphrasing, you, they all need your in-text citation, which then corresponds to your citation in your works cited references or bibliography. And um, the one thing I'll, I'll say is uh, quoting should be used sparingly. You should not use a lot of direct quotes. You should use more um, summarizing and paraphrasing than you do quotes because when you summarize and paraphrase something, that lets your instructor know that you understood the material enough to be able to put it into your own words. Okay, um, You should only use quotes when you need to have some kind of direct impact um, or you know, you really cannot think of a better way to put what the author is saying. So you would use a direct quote. But again, those quotes shouldn't be very long. Um, you should be able to paraphrase or summarize everything else. So keep that in mind. <coughs> and the other thing we caution students about is copying and pasting. Even if your intention is to cite the source, when you copy and paste uh, from a source into your document, it can lead you to a lot of trouble, including um, not understanding completely the information that you are trying to use, so you copy and paste it, and um, that can also lead to you forgetting to put the um, citation at the end. So you don't want to copy and paste, you want to type it out yourself uh, and make sure that um, you completely understand what it is you're including in your paper and so that that information is, um, is right there and available. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense and you understand what I'm saying. Uh, definitely type it yourself, don't copy and paste it. Keep in mind that um, while these are the expectations for you as a college student at Warren County Community College, you are not alone. All right. If you're not sure about any of the things covered in this video, please ask questions. Okay, You can ask your professor. 
if you uh, want to use something to help you with your chemistry homework, you can ask your professor to see if that's okay to use. All right, your professor is the one that can tell you, yes, okay, you can work on this assignment with another partner, or you can use this source while you're doing your homework. They're the best person to answer because they're the ones giving you the grade. But you can always ask me, uh, Lisa, your librarian. You can reach out to me, and I will be glad to help you with anything uh, that you see in this video or anything else that you might have questions about. And you also have the ISC, which is the Instructional Support Center. So the ISC is where you can get free tutoring to help you with any part of the research and writing process. And tutoring is available for most courses offered at WCCC, including math, sciences, and things like that. So if you're struggling in your class and you don't know, um, you don't understand a concept, you're not understanding parts of it, reach out to the ISC and schedule an appointment with a tutor. And that kind of outside assistance is OK because the tutors are not going to do your work for you. And we know that um, at the college. We know that the tutors are there not to do your work for you, but to help you to do your work on your own. OK, so that is a great resource for you. Just some basic contact information. If you want to reach out to me at the library, you can email me at wcclibrary at warren.edu. You can text me at that number there, and I will respond to you as soon as I can. And you can always go to uh, the website, which is available from the home page, but the direct URL is warren.libguides.com. Now, the ISC, you can contact Rose Lynch, the ISC coordinator. Uh, you can email her at wccisc at warren.edu. You can call her on that number there and leave her a message, and she will be glad to call you back. And they also have um, their website link here, which is www.warren.edu backslash tutoring. Um, but you can also reach um, the tutoring page if you go to the quick search at the top of the WCCC homepage. You could type in tutoring, and you'd be able to reach that page that way as well. Well, thank you very much for watching our video, and good luck.